The race had only 12 laps to go. Kenny's car was running a little behind Thomas Schechter's car when they came into the turn together. To make this all happen, he's got to be thinking... Kenny kind of came down a little bit, and Schechter kind of held his line, and tires rubbed. When two tires that are going around get together, one car tends to take off, and that's what happened to Kenny. Kenny was sealed in the cockpit, spinning down the racetrack. It took me like two seconds to realize this was major, this was huge, this was maybe Kenny was dead. Emergency crews raced to the scene of the crash. There was so much debris on the racetrack, we didn't even know how many cars were involved. I just saw the replay in my head all the time, so then you cried, I mean, just grabbed my eyes out. Kenny was unconscious when we first got there. Within minutes, Kenny was carefully lifted from the wreckage. Paramedics immobilized him and rushed him to an ambulance. It was obvious that both his ankles had been crushed. They were bleeding profusely. Kenny was airlifted to Parkland Hospital over 30 miles away in Dallas. Upon arrival, he was rushed to a waiting team of doctors and nurses. A CAT scan revealed that Kenny had numerous severe injuries. When his car hit the wall, the phenomenal force of the impact broke both his ankles, his right thigh, his sternum, and two ribs. As the cockpit spun wildly, Kenny's L3 vertebra shattered, and the joints between the other lumbar vertebra were pulled apart, causing the nerves to Kenny's legs to come out of the spinal column. The spinal fracture was so severe that the nerves of Kenny's spine were unprotected. One wrong move could leave Kenny paralyzed for life. The first surgery was his legs, his ankles, because they were open wounds, so they had to take care of those at once. That night, surgeons operated on his fractured thigh and ankles. Titanium plates and screws were used to reassemble the broken bones. Kenny was given less than 24 hours to recover. Then the doctors turned their attention to his back. His spinal injury was a unique kind of fracture that results from a high-speed motor vehicle collision. Two surgeries were needed to repair the damage to Kenny's spine. The goal of the first surgery was to stabilize the spine. When we got in there, there was evidence of spinal fluid, places where it shouldn't be, so that required an extensive repair. A rod and screws into each vertebra were used to hold Kenny's spine in position while it healed. Doctors had to take great care when dealing with his nerves. Initially, when I was putting his nerves back into his spinal canal, I was concerned that he wouldn't be able to walk again. It was an agonizing eight-hour wait for Anita. I was devastated for a while, because I didn't know, will I be able to walk, will I be able to... What, what can he do later on? We didn't know. Kenny was put in a back brace, and after a few days, he was transferred to Methodist Hospital, close to home in Indianapolis. Kenny began his rehab, but his progress was short-lived. First, he was fine. The second, the second day, he was starting to feel a little bit short of breath. The third day, he was feeling more short of breath. And finally, I mean, he didn't feel better. As a precaution, his doctor ordered a CAT scan. What he found in Kenny's lung was shocking. It had a huge blood clot, like in the worst possible spot you can have. A clot in the lungs, called a pulmonary embolism, can be quickly fatal. Death can occur within 30 minutes of the onset of symptoms. Doctors gave Kenny drugs that reduce clotting, then suctioned excess fluid out of his chest with a needle. Kenny recovered from the near-fatal complication quickly. Within a week, he returned to rehab. But now, the driver who conquered the Indy 500 had a new race to run, and he would have to start from the very beginning.